In this lesson, we're going to be exploring SIRDs. Uh, more specifically, we're looking at binomial expansion of SIRDs. A quick introduction to binomial expansion. Binomial expansion, or the binomial product, can be represented by this little expression here on the board, underlined in green. Now, a binomial product is when you have two factors multiplied together that are made up of a sum of numbers. So here we have A and B. They're added together, and they're being multiplied by C and D. Now, this is a rather complicated way of writing the answer. You've got AC, AD, BC, BD. All that pretty much says is you need to multiply each number by every number in the other bracket. So A times C, and that's where the AC comes from. A times D, that's the next number, that's where that comes from. B times C, and B times D, and those B, C, and B, D there. So that's all that means. Now, some people like to remember this as the rainbows, and that's what happens when you draw those lines on there, is you start to get a couple of rainbows happening. Now, what we're going to do is we'll look at this in a basic form. Instead of dealing with complex numbers or thirds or anything, we'll just look at it with whole numbers to start with. So here we have 3 plus 5 multiplied by 9 minus 2. Now most of us, according to our bod mass, would deal with this by doing the brackets first. We would add those together, and we would have 8 multiplied by 9 minus 2 is 7, and that would get us 56. Seems easy enough, but what happens if this 5 is actually an x? and you don't know what that is. That makes it a little more difficult. So we're going to keep them as whole numbers and we're going to solve it using the method above. So using our binomial product. Alright, let's rewrite it down here. We're going to have 3 and the 5 multiplied by the 9 minus the 2. So, 3 plus 5 times 9 minus 2. According to our rainbows, our first number in the first bracket needs to be multiplied by the first number in the second bracket. So we're going to have a 3 times a 9. Then we need our number in the first bracket multiplied by the second number in the bracket. So that is going to be plus 3 times negative 2. Plus, next we need to multiply the second number in the first bracket by the two numbers in the second so we're going to have 5 multiplied by the 9. And that's going to give us 5 times 9 in that bracket, plus that number again, the 5 multiplied by the last number over there. That gives us 5 times negative 2. So that's all rather long now. Let's simplify it down. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 5 times negative 2 gives us negative 10. So what we have here, just using some quick positive and a negative makes a negative. A positive and a negative makes a negative. So 27 minus 6 gives you 21, plus 45 minus 10 gives you 35. 21 and 35 give you 56. Huh. That's the same answer as we got above by just multiplying the two numbers together. So we know this method works, and we know that's how we do it. It is rather long and complicated, but we need to be able to do it because we cannot solve things any other way. We've looked at adding and subtracting thirds together, and we know that it's the same as adding and subtracting like terms. You can only join apples with apples and oranges with oranges. So if we had, and for example, in this bracket here, we had a square root of 5 and a square root of 7 in the bracket. We cannot add them together first without destroying the accuracy that holding the square root signs keeps. So we need to do this longer way of multiplying each third together to get this long answer but still highly accurate. This isn't a binomial product, but it will provide a great stepping board into dealing with multiple thirds together. Okay, the steps are going to remain the same though. We have this number outside the bracket. Remember there is a invisible multiplication sign in there, and we have a root 5 and a root 7 in there. So what we need to be able to do is grab the first one and multiply it, and multiply our root 3 by the root 7 as well. So let's have a look. Square root of 3 times the square root of 5 
I'm going to do that under the one third. That's using our rule of joining them together. Then we're going to have a plus the square root of 3 times 7. Okay, simplifying those multiplication, we have a 15 plus a 21. Now we cannot join those together because it's a 15 and a 21. That's like having some apples here, yet having the oranges over here. We cannot say we have 20 app oranges. So we need to do something about this. Can we simplify those? Is there any factor that is a perfect square that goes into 15? No, I can't think of one. Is there any that goes into 21? No. Nope. So that is as simple as our answer can become. Have a look at another example. Getting a little more difficult. We've got some coefficients this time, but the steps remain the same. We just need to remember that whole numbers by whole numbers and surge by surge when multiplying. So here we have 2 root 11, and we're going to multiply that by 3 root 11. Then we're going to have 2 root 11 again, and multiply that by negative 5 root 2. All right, give myself some more room. 2 root 11 times 3 root 11. We might write this out the long way to make sure that we don't miss a step. There's our first one, and that is added on to the 2 root 11 again, multiplied by the negative 5 root 2. All right. Let's multiply these out. Whole number by whole number. 2 times 3 gives us 6. Third by third. The square root of 11 times the square root of 11. Now, this is kind of like saying the square root of 11 squared. It's being multiplied by itself. And remember, those are the opposite operation of each other. So that becomes just an 11. So we've got 6 times 11 plus... Down the bottom, we've got the 2 times the negative 5. So that gives us a negative 10 in that bracket. Multiplied by thirds by third. So we have the square root of 11 times the square root of 2. So that is the square root of 22. And we will close that bracket off. Okay. 6 times 11 gives us 66 plus, minus, 10, square root of 22. And we're almost there. Just got to fix up this little symbol in the middle and give our answer to be 66 minus 10 root 22. And there we have it. There is expanding some brackets using thirds, but not quite binomial expansion just yet. Okay, binomial expansion. Looks imposing. The steps remain the same as before, we just have one more multiplication to do. Alright, let's draw on our rainbows. First by first, and first by second. Then we have second by first, and second by second. Now we multiply along those lines and write down the answer for each. Okay, so multiplying along the first red line, the little rainbow, we have square root of 7 multiplied by... 3 root 2. So we have the 3 root 2 multiplied by the square root of 7. I might break this up again to make sure we don't miss a step. Alright, we have that on. Now we're going to do the big red rainbow. We have the square root of 7 multiplied by negative square root of 3. Then we have the little green rainbow. So we have the square root of 5 multiplied by 3 root 2. Add that on. Now the big green rainbow, we have the square root of 5 multiplied by negative root 3. So that's quite a bit of work involved in this. And let's join them together, the top line. Now remember, whole numbers by whole numbers and thirds by thirds. And even though there isn't a number at the front of square root of 7, we can pretend there is a 1 because that doesn't change it. So we have 3 times the square root of 14 plus negative square root of 21 plus 3 multiplied by the square root of 10 that's the two thirds multipl get multiplied together of 2 and 5 then we have, I'm going to have to go underneath here negative square root of 
15 because the two thirds of the 5 are negative 3. Give myself a bit more room here. Let's finish it off. Can any of those be simplified? 14, there's no perfect square in that. 21, a 10, 15. No, none of them are the same, so we cannot add them together or take them away like, like terms. What we can do is we can clean up these double signs that are starting to appear. So we can have 3 root 14 minus 21 plus 3 root 10 minus the square root of 15. Now I should have went down a little bit more so I could write that in one big line. Uh, and I might do that now just to show you what it should look like. So 3 times the square root of 14 minus the square root of 21 plus 3 times the square root of 10 minus the square root of 15. And there is our final answer after a binomial expansion. Now this is a lengthy process. I'm not going to lie and say that it's not going to take very long, but it is rather easy if you keep track of everything you do.